Man, oh man, time flies when you're having fun, right? It's already been like 60 days since I did my first flight with the DJI Neo. And I must say, this drone has delivered. Maybe not on quality, but honestly, I don't really care about that. Everything looks good on a smartphone anyway, which is probably where you're watching this video right now. $200 and you get the most beginner-friendly feature-packed and versatile drone that you can fly in so many different ways, including your smartphone and just by using voice commands. Now, I've been putting some real hours into this uh, drone up until now, and at this point, I don't think there's any other drone that can replace this unless it's called DJI Neo 2 or Neo Pro. I'm not saying that this will replace my Mini 4 Pro or the Air 3S here, which is a fantastic drone, but most of the times when I'm out uh, shooting a video, it's usually with an action camera, uh, or maybe I have a product I need to make a video of, or maybe I'm just on vacation, and most of those times I really want to grab some aerial shots of where I am so I can share that location with you guys. But up until the release of the Neo it has always been an effort I would say. So with the Neo I can just press one of the buttons here on the drone itself and it will start to follow me for example and with the Mini 4 Pro or the Mini 3 Pro or the Mini 4K or the Air 3S I would always have to pull out the drone, power it on, connect it to the controller, wait for GPS, then launch the drone, then draw a box around me and then tap record and then tap start. So this tiny $200 drone has made that process a lot faster and easier to capture those types of shots, which also means that I'm able to capture more videos and videos from places I wouldn't really bother setting up a bigger drone just to get a 10 second clip. Even though the quality is significantly lower on the DJI Neo, I honestly don't care because this allows me to capture so much more in the way that it's easier to use, faster to use, which means that I'm using it far more often than these other drones. Let's say I want to do a few seconds of tracking, for example. I just press the button on the drone here itself and it will start tracking me within a few seconds. And when I'm done with the tracking, I can just turn around, walk towards the drone and put my hand underneath it and it will land automatically and it will turn off the motors, which is fantastic. So it's just crazy how versatile this little thing is. As for image quality, like I said, I don't really mind. And when you buy something like this, you can't expect it to look like the Air 3S. But with a bit of correction and adjustments in post, you can actually make this footage look pretty decent. Even the quick shots, which has default settings, meaning sharpness is set to zero, even though you change it to minus two when you have a remote, when you connect it back to your phone again, or just use a simple quick shot, these settings will automatically go back to default which means that the sharpness is back to zero. So I spent the last few weeks making an exclusive LUT pack for the DJI Neo which you can find down below if you want to check it out. This LUT bundle contains 10 different LUTs with each having a unique color pattern and can be applied directly to the footage in your editing software if your editing software supports .cube files which most of the editing softwares do nowadays. Now the concept of these LUTs are basically the same as my signature LUTs so if you already have those, it's basically the same process. You adjust the LUT by applying the LUT you like first, and then you can adjust the slider to increase or decrease the intensity of the LUT. So if you want to check them out, there's a link down below with 25% off as well. So after flying the DJI Neo for almost 60 days now, uh, what's the real pros and cons here? Again, it's a $200 drone, so you can't expect the same quality as we get from the Mini 3, the Mini 4K, the Mini 4 Pro, for example, and the Air 3S. But if quality is what you value most, I would simply buy the Mini 4 Pro, which is both under 250 grams and gives you some of the best image quality in a drone for its price. And as for the DJI Neo, I would honestly buy this regardless of what drone I have. Because 
because it adds more value to whatever you're out filming, whether this is a vacation, a short hike, a road trip, or anything like that. You can also fly FPV with the goggles 3 and the FPV remote controller, the motion controller, and you can fly with the RC2 and also the RC N2 and N3 controller, which requires a phone to be added. But you can also fly this with your smartphone and you can also fly just by using voice commands, which is fantastic. So you can use commands like closer, further, higher, lower to control the distance of the drone, which is perfect if you're out on a bicycle, for example, do a vlog or just want to capture some hands-free videos. And even by just getting the standalone unit, which does not have a controller, I'm still able to fly with my smartphone and I'm still able to capture cinematic videos, which is fantastic. Now, one of the things I think is overlooked with the DJI Neo is that this has a huge library of features when you think about it. We have tracking, point of interest, spotlight, quick shots, direction track, 4K 30fps, 1080p, 60fps if you want to add some subtle slow motion to your clips, and also photos. And I'm not gonna lie, at first, I really hated this drone or some parts of this drone because I think I was expecting too much. One of those things being the image quality and the lack of ND filters, which was not available at first when I tested this drone, which in my opinion makes a huge difference if you fly without a dedicated remote and you just fly with uh, your smartphone or just use quick shots. And I'm not sure how many times I've said this, but you need to use ND filters, especially if you fly with quick shots or just your smartphone where you can't lower the sharpness to minus two. And even with the sharpness set to minus two, the image quality is still a little bit sharp uh, in my opinion, but you can actually reduce the sharpness even further by using ND filters, which will also help reduce the shutter speed. So the higher shutter speed, the more contrast, saturation, and sharpness will be added to your video. And it doesn't matter what brand you're using when it comes to these ND filters, they all work in the same way. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Freewell, so that's that's what I'm using, so I'm gonna leave a link to those down there as well. But if you just want something that works, uh, which is also cheaper, there is cheaper alternatives on Amazon. I'll leave some link to those as well. So. Because of that, I would say the main con here is that you would need a dedicated remote to lower the sharpness and combine that with ND filters in order to get the shutter speed close to 1 over 60 when you record in 4K 30 FPS and shoot in bright conditions. And after flying this for 60 days, uh, this is my only con really. I'm sure DJI is already working on some adjustments for sharpness control to make it easier to lower the sharpness when we are using the DJI Flyer. App, whether this is just to connect to the drone and uh, do some manual flying with your smartphone or to change the settings for the quick shots. But this is highly needed and I hope it's coming sooner than later. Now, when it comes to pros, there's so many pros and so many good things to say about this drone. So to start with, we have a full selection of features on the drone itself here, where each icon represent its own unique feature. And we also have a custom selection here where you can choose between Boomerang, Helix, and Direction Track in the DJI Fly app. And these are all accessible by a press of a button, which is why I think this is the best drone DJI has ever made. $200 so easy to use. Firstly, there is no skill required in order to fly this, which makes the user experience much better. It also fits in my pocket, which makes it the easiest drone to carry around when you just want something quick and easy. And you can also use this to capture videos handheld, and it's more comfortable to use than these other drones, which are bigger. It also has a built-in voice prompt, which tells you which mode you're on, and it also tells you if the lighting conditions are good or bad, or mostly bad. So if they're bad, you get a voice prompt saying that you should fly in a properly lit environment, which is always a nice feature to have if you're unsure of, you know, the conditions you want to fly in. 
and because it only weighs 135 grams, has a built-in propeller guard, flies at a slower speed, uh, it's less likely that the drone will take severe damage on impact compared to something like the Mini 4 Pro which flies a little bit faster and has exposed uh, propellers. Even if you use prop guards, it's not going to be the same as we have on the Neo. And when it comes to traveling with this, I, I have a video already where I took it to Hawaii. So if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend that you check out that video. It's just taking off and uh, so many people enjoy that video. So make sure to check that down below. But mainly as a travel drone, I would say that this, you know, if you just want to capture some videos here and there from different locations, there's no other drone that can do it better than the DJI Neo, if you ask me. It's so easy to use. Everything is just one button and you have your sequence and you can later just combine this in uh, your editing software and make a travel sequence. And taking the Neo here and combine that with the Air 3S, for example, which has a one inch sensor, I have the best of both worlds, both uh, quality and versatility. So make sure that you check out my weeks later review of the Air 3S as well, not from Hawaii, but from here in Norway. And I think you'll find that video pretty interesting interesting. So I would say the DJI Neo is something for everyone, regardless of experience. And if you just want something that makes it easier and faster to capture aerial videos, this is the drone to get. Even if you already have the Mavic 3 Pro, the Air 3S, the Mini 4 Pro, the Mini 4K, Mini 3 Pro, uh, Mini 3, the Neo will just add additional benefits and you'll quickly see that you'll end up with videos you most likely wouldn't bother with because of the time it takes to set up these other drones which also requires a controller and don't fit in your pocket. So I would say you'll end up with more spontaneous shots. And if you're a content creator, you can also use this to make your videos look more interesting with different angles without spending much time on setting things up and create a pattern with waypoints or use the same quick shots, which is also available on the DJI Neo, for example. But mainly you don't have to use a controller it's just one tap button and you can execute these missions or these quick shots, the follow mission, and it's so much easier. And for 199 US dollars, I think this is a no brainer. So there you have my months later honest review of the DJI uh, Neo. I'm also curious to know your thoughts on this drone if you already have it. What's the reason you bought it and what's the reason you, you didn't buy it? Uh, so let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't, are you planning on buying it in the future? So that's going to be everything for today's video. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button and turn on notifications so you stay up to date with new releases. So until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.